Mm -hmm. Yeah. My screen is sharing, right? Yes, sharing, I can see. You can just inform me when we are live, okay? We are live already, but no, you start in two minutes. Hello and welcome everyone to this exciting today's webinar, The Role of Transformation PMO in the Renewed Digital Era. My name is Kashan Kiyum and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar. This event is provided to you by PMI UA Chapter. PMI is a world leader in the project management and is a body and is a nonprofit membership association and certification body. The PMI Chapter UA chapter runs by 100% volunteer. At PMI, we are passionate about project management, professional development, education, and network networking. Our sponsors comprise of National Archives, Ministry of Presidential Affairs, UAE, Dubai Health Authority. Our partners are IIL Middle East. For more information, please follow our on different social media platforms and our web link, pmiua.org. One PDU will be automatically claimed to those who attend the webinar today. So now I will introduce a little, little bit about our presenter, Dr. Harris. 
Dr. Harris is a visionary strategic executioner, executive authority. Dr. Harris is a visionary strategy executive author and speaker with two decades of diverse industry exposure, highly skilled and experienced in international and multicultural business environments, led and directed a plethora of large scale complex projects, portfolios and programs, 20 countries up to $1.65 billion value and benefits of $178 million. Result oriented, being capable to lead business and digital transformations PMOs and sustainable strategy implementation, putting the pieces towards corporate excellence. Board member and chief transformation officer, CTO of the PMO Global Alliance, board member of the Artificial Intelligence and Action, AIIA, NPO as well, and exclusive member of PMI's thought leadership inner circle, actively contributing to the profession and the community. Harris works often involves the integration of multiple strategy process and tools taking into consideration diverse corporate environment factors blended with change and risk management frameworks as well as with the global project management, best practices, traditional agile and hybrid technology. He's got industrial experience, government, airlines, aviation, smart cities, banking, supply chain, logistic, IT, telecom, renewable energy, and education. He's a result-oriented and led business and digital transformation PMOs. He has certification of PMP as well as program management professional PCMP as well as PFMP, portfolio management professional. Welcome, Dr. Harris, to the session today. Dr. Harris, Hi to all. I will hand over the session towards you. All right. Uh, let me start a video. Can you start my video, my picture, because it's locked by the host, please, so I would, uh, so people can see me, and I will share my screen. All right. All right, guys. Uh, marhaba. Many thanks to all. Uh, for the invitation the PMI UH chapter today, we're going to discuss a very interesting, uh, I would say, topic about the role of transformation PMO in the new digital era. Uh, very quickly, my profile was uh, discussed a bit uh, a while ago. Further to my different certification, of course, I'm affiliated with PMI. Uh, I reviewed both the six and the seventh edition of PMBOK, uh, the risk management framework, as well as the latest program management framework. So welcome to a new exciting digital future. We're gonna have the chance to discuss a lot about uh, digital transformation and digital PMOs, and I will be happy to reply to your questions at the end of the session. So today's agenda, at the beginning, we're gonna discuss about PMOs, the new digital era. Then we're gonna discuss about the new reality, some facts or figures, some survey results from PMO Global Alliance, in the third section, we're gonna discuss about specifically PMOs in the digital transformation uh, era, uh, some more information about digital transformation modeling, a bit about artificial intelligence. Before the end, I'm gonna discuss about PMO as a digital chameleon and some leadership principles so as to uh, help you uh, and give you some insights of how you can run a digital PMO. And at the end, I'm gonna have a summary about some key takeaways and some other insights in regards to moving forward. Now, a clear digital strategy can enable PMOs to play an essential role in achieving organizational goals towards corporate excellence and stability. You've seen that COVID crisis uh, accelerated digital transformation and PMOs is a lot of, uh, I would say, movement around PMOs and especially in the digital part, a lot of people discussing about the PMOs and how these things can bring value organizational-wise. 
So transformation actually a strategic and structured process is moving from A to B, but it's not as easy as it sounds because it requires a lot of capacity and a lot of capabilities. So in this, uh, in this frame, digital transformation is the integration of digital services or technologies into the business area. So actually you model the technology in sort of a, more, in a model that will have prosperity and give you more value for an organization. Specifically sharing my experience with you, a deal transformation or a transformation in the business domain is more successful uh, when the corporate ethos aligns with the beliefs and values portrayed by the transformation itself. There's no one size fits all Axel because transformations, especially when the PMO is engaged is different and many things should be taken into account. So briefly, the ability to drive a corporate transformation moving from average to good performance cut costs or turning around the crisis. COVID-19 was a big crisis and everybody uh, knows quite well of what has happened, at least in Dubai. Things are much, much better, things have normalized. So it's a leading source uh, to lead to a competitive advantage. And in principle, most of the companies initiate a digital transformation and set up a digital PMO to have a competitive advantage to bring in the market more services, more products, and so forth. So in order for the benefits of the transformation to be realized, commitment by both the company and the individuals is required. Buy-in from top leadership of an organization is really, really important. And as we discussed a while ago, there is no one size fits all. So each transformation or PMO has its own quick wins, its own governance, its own people. So more or less, uh, the key message out of it is that it's different than a previous one or a forthcoming to be built. Now, a strong transformation PMO blended with portfolio management, this is key important. I will uh, spend some time to discuss why we need the portfolio level a PMO or portfolio management is key for the success in order to bring sustained value and benefits. And overall, what will happen, it will power the uh, organization gradually. So in principle, digital transformation is synonymous to mo modernization of business processes, which traditionally were supported by the IT. This was happening some time ago, but now as you are aware, it's not only the IT that's engaged in the digital domain in a digital era. In some cases, there's a chief digital officer, a chief transformation officer, even the CEO or the chief finance officer, other high level people from the company are engaged in this kind of transformation. Overall, the ultimate goal out of a digital transformation where the PMO is engaged is to bring value and sustain it. And the stability of a business value is even much more important a month harder to achieve. But we're going to discuss all such kind of things as the time passes by during this presentation. Hi to all, hope you're well and safe. I'm Anna, Harris's assistant. Today we will discuss a very interesting topic in regards to digital transformation. Have you ever thought that digital transformations are not purely technology ones, but part of the business transformation ecosystem? Actually, change is a requirement for transformations, and transformations involve change. Did you realize that I'm not a real person, but an artificial digital avatar? Now, back to Harris for the presentation. Well, as my assistant Anna did say, she's not a real person, but a digital avatar. And this is actually the future in a lot of applications. For example, in the educational sector, maybe we'll not need physical presence of academics. Maybe you'll be going to a bank and the digital avatar will be uh, smart enough to be able to reply to your questions. Maybe in the near future, you'll go to the court and it will be a digital attorney or a digital judge, who knows? I'm just showing you uh, the future. And what Anna did say a while ago is very, very important. Digital transformations are not purely digital ones, but other part of a larger uh, ecosystem in the business domain. And I will guess about that and I will be glad to uh, share more insights and hear your opinions as well. Now, some facts and figures of what has happened uh, the previous, I would say, time, and then I will gradually link this to my presentation. The International Monetary Fund projected a global growth of 6% from 2020 
for this year and uh, related growth 4.9% in 2022. And this is really important because uh, in the past year we've been practicing social distancing, a lot of uh, restrictions. So things were not moving as fast as we did believe, but in the digital sector, uh, things were accelerated. Uh, and, and another important result from Gartner, 88 of organizations and gurus are required employees to work from home. Most of us were required to work from home. Remote work is here and it will stay. PwC, if I'm not wrong, today I did read that they will allow around 40,000 employees in the United States to work from home. So these things work. Maybe you enjoy to work from home. Maybe uh, now the digital tools and processes are mature enough so we can make our life much easier, maybe productivity is higher. But on the other hand, their traffic will not return to pre-COVID levels until 2024, as per International Air Transport Association. You know about that, uh, especially for Dubai, that is a place that a lot of tourists to come. Uh, most business travels have been put down. It's not the same. It's not easy to travel to another continent, for example, to travel to United States because of restrictions to go to London or to other European countries. But another key issue out of it is, is that a lot of money is invested in the IT and the digital domain in the next 10, 15 years. So these things will grow. And maybe you've seen in Dubai, a lot of, uh, I would say, initiatives, smart to buy, in the digital domain, the public sector is getting more and more digitized, the services are getting more and more digital, so there is a lot of interaction about that. Digital nomads, people that work uh, in Dubai from many different uh, areas and continents. Now, this is one of the surveys that we run the PMO Global Alliance, just to try to have some key insight of what was happening. And this one of the question, the survey is live. I will share at the end of my presentation the link so you can take the time and reply. It will be uh, ended something like uh, mid of October, third week of October. So if you want to spend five, 10 minutes of your time, please do uh, take the chance and take part in our survey. So one of the questions was, which do you think are the top three challenges of the recent global crisis? The top three. As we speak now, is first one is structuring the global economy. Of course, COVID crisis did hit the global economy, but now things, as we've seen, are much better. Business transformation, a really key, important result. Remember what I told you a while ago that uh, digital transformation is actually business transformation and digital technology acceleration. So the results that we got out of this research survey more or less fit. Uh, the earlier introduction of our presentation. Top 10 skills, this is quite important because when we discuss about digital technologies and digital transformation, digital PMO, it's not that easy as it sounds because it requires a lot of skills in, in this sector. I've seen from my experience and career path, a lot of people with high digital skills, for example, the AI and the IoT, cybersecurity, you name it. But on the other hand, they lack a lot of leadership skills or soft skills as we call them in the industry. But I like more the human skills than the soft skills like critical thinking, complex problem solving. So these are some results from the World Economic Forum that 20% of all employees will need to reskill by 2025, you need to upskill. And this is a key result that half of us in the near future will need to reskill, we need to attend some trainings in order to be able to catch up with technology and the acceleration of, of, of these uh, services and products that are coming. So uh, this is quite important because automation is increasing. AI as a technology, as a trend is increasing as well also in, in Dubai. A lot of services are coming, a lot of intelligent service, I would say. So this is a key result to have in mind. No matter what happens, if you're given the opportunity to upskill, to take a training in the digital field or in the AI, IoT, cybersecurity, or any training, this will do good to you uh, at the very end. Another result related to PMO that we tried to dig out was which are the top skills 
and competencies of the PMO professional in order to cope with this situation. And here are the top three results that we were able to catch. First of all, complex problem solving. This is not as easy as the sound because most of you already have uh, in, in working in business environments that are complex and problems do come arise any minute, any second, tomorrow, the day after. So one of the top skills is problem, problem solving. So for example, risk integration or systemic risk, or we call them in dangers. How you solve such kind of problems? It's not just a leadership issue. It's conflict management, it's risk management, change management integrated with, uh, of course, with governance and many, many other things, tools, processes, not easy. Highly adaptable, things have changed and for sure are not the same as it used to be two years ago, okay? Remote working was one of the issues that, uh, things that happened and we had to adapt. Third, analytical thinking. So what does it mean to be analytical thing? What does it mean to be logical, to behave in a logical manner, going from A to B? Don't jump around to things that people maybe cannot understand, things that the company does not have the capacity or the capability to reach consensus, reach a result, follow the processes, use tools that are easy, user-friendly for most of the people, talk to experts, ask for help. So it's not easy as it sounds, but you understand out of the top three competencies, those three, three ones do match the current landscape of the, I would say, after COVID-19 crisis. What happened has happened for a reason. However, now we move to a greater prosperity to the other side of the coin, to offering more digital services and products. What I have seen from my career so far is that a lot of people discuss about change and transformation in the same way. But I will show you now that it's totally different words. They have totally different meaning. So the past is a fundamental reference point. Let's say that is point A. So what we need to change, to change is to learn from the past and create a new sustainable future. What you do, you change your car, you change the color of your hair, you change your clothes. This is how you change, but you, you change your behavior, you transform yourself to a new person. For example, when you have the capacity or capability to listen and talking. So we start with the status quo. COVID crisis has happened. Couldn't be avoided, but what happened after almost two years is that there's a process to learn and improve. We learned what has happened, vaccination, people got used to the situation, we got improved and we reached a state of a new business modeling landscape. On the other hand, when we talk about the transformation, we create the future, something new, but we have the reference point, the past because actually you cannot change the past. But out of the past, as we call it in the project management world, is the lessons learned. So we've learned a lot of lessons and these lessons were very, very important and we could move on. But in order to create the future, you have to start with a vision, what you will create, how you will communicate this message to your peers, to your team, to your supervisor, how C-level executives will go to a stage of a high buy-in. Which are the stakeholders? What we want to create? And this, of course, requires a very high level, I would say, uh, level of collaboration. And this is really important because nothing can be built if you're alone. You need a team of experts, maybe in the IT field, maybe in the AI field, maybe in the PMO domain field, in many different aspects, but you need to work together. From my experience, the transformation cannot work alone. You cannot work it alone. And at the end, you reach a state of future and sustainability. And sustainable result is not easy because maybe you get a snapshot of success. And that's why we use in the industry the notion of quick wins, something that most of the stakeholders can participate most of the messages, most of the results can, keep, can be digested and move forward accordingly. So some use of digital transformation, uh, 
and that will go gradually to the PMO field. So digital disruption is a mega trend as we speak now. It's ongoing, external, all internal, and has radical impacts and changing the expectations and behaviors. You can see that in your business environment that perhaps you offer more digital services or products than last year. Maybe your supervisor or the department that is in charge, for example, the strategic department or the digital department, your company discuss about this disruption and what you need to do in order to move forward, what kind of products and services you could offer as a company on an individual level or an organization level. So that goes to a digital maturity readiness, how we do the business. Is our modeling approach, our model approach obsolete? Do we need to evolve our model to include more digital services? Do we need to have more experts in the digital field? So more or less the digital maturity will measure the ability to move forward offering such kind of service and product. And it's not easy because product or services design needs a lot of work a lot of team, and sometimes there are a lot of failures. Don't believe that each product that you see will succeed, even if it's a digital project. So more or less, you understand how these things work. The last is related to digital inno innovation initiatives. Maybe you can name some innovative companies, like for example, Tesla, right? With the electric cars. A lot of uh, Tesla cars in Dubai already, a lot of taxis. You can see them almost uh, every minute, okay, when you, uh, what's uh, the road out of your window, out of your house or your working environment? All the innovative companies is Amazon, of course, or Google or Apple with innovative products. And they, what they try to do to stay above the curve is to offer more and more innovative products to the people. They change the technology. They drive the technology. NASA, right? It's another organization, okay? With innovative products almost at the very beginning. So it's not just the mega trend, it's not just the people, it's not just the product, it's their strategies, the practices, the marketing plan. And this is where the PMO has an active role, putting the pieces together in order to sustain and bring the result. Now, in this slide, I'm showing to you some digital transformation definitions from established conference from Microsoft. They discuss about reimagining how you bring together people so it's getting to a human-centric notion of what the digital transformation is, not by accident. And it's really important that Microsoft, of course, because their products are sold to people, right? People use it. So more or less, it has to use a more human-centric approach. Gartner, new digital business model. So what we have is the past. Remember I told you about the vision? a new digital business model. Salesforce is the process of using digital technologies. Of course, use digital technologies, but it's not just a technology. It's a combination of digital and leadership capabilities. Create something new, or you see modify existing processes, culture, customer experience. And culture plays a very important role. More around people discuss about the corporate culture. What is our digital culture? Do we want to move forward? How do we do that? Is our CEO a person that is open-minded, that he have his door open for us to tell our ideas? Is our supervisor a person that listens to us, help us promote the ideas? It's fair and so forth. Forrester, introduce new products. Bain, integrate digital technology, strategy, some keywords, profitable growth, competitive advantage. Of course, you don't do these things for fun, okay? You want some profit, you need some, uh, some growth out of it. And this is the magic that happens out of these things and engagement. It's not easy, but sometimes it's fun to work with people that they have innovative ideas, want to do more, engage in digital technologies, they have some innovative tools, innovative processes, how you build, for example, an innovative PMO, what kind of tools you use? You use Agile, you use Lean, you use hybrid, hybrid approaches, what do you do? And the most important thing is how you do it. Key lessons learned out of that, how you do it. 
Now, dealing with change in the PMO at the project level, on the project program or portfolio level, in a project level, of course, change is expected and the PMO keeps the processes in form, manners and control. It affects up to a level, but not a very high level things that are happening. And of course, when we discuss at the project level, we'll discuss about deliverables, all right? At the program level, things are a bit, a level more complicated. Change is in higher complexity, right? Is expected. And the PMO should be well prepared to manage it. For example, at the program level PMO, did you have program management tools, processes, techniques, change management framework that explains all the stuff integrated with, uh, for example, the governance of an organization and so forth. And what we discuss about benefits, which are the tangible and the tangible benefits out of it. At the portfolio level, PMO continuously monitor the changes and controls, but in the broad internal and external environment. We discuss about systemic risks, a lot of integrations, a lot of verticals in the company are engaged. We discuss at the highest level of, I would say, strategy. And that's why we discuss about strategic objectives. All is good in the PMO because the PMO has a vital role either in a project level, a program or portfolio. But now when we discuss about value creation and sustainability, we have to take into account the digital capacity and capabilities of our organization. So this is an extra layer, I would say, of difficulty, but a layer that can build growth and prosperity for an organization. Uh, this is a latest slide I prepared a few hours before. It's from Boston Consulting. So when I discuss about transformation in the changing landscape, they discussed about goals commitment, which is straightforward. You need to start with commitment and goals, which are goals in the digital or business fields. Some baseline and target state, perhaps some KPIs or OQRs. Solution capacity and development. Someone needs to develop it and at the end implement it. In most of the cases, there are brilliant minds and brilliant ideas, but stay on paper. For example, Facebook. As an idea, it's simple, right? You got a platform, right? That you upload your picture and you upload messages and pictures and videos and you connect the community. Now that is built, you think it's easy because it's, you have it fully deployed. Someone did thought of it and turn his words into action. And this is the biggest difficulty in this kind of deployment, to turn uh, the words into actions. Then they discuss about the leader journey, align leaders on purpose goals. Of course, you need to align a company at all different levels to those goal commitment. The vision, I would say, turn leaders into transformation agents. It's not easy, as they say. Maybe you've heard the change agents Transformation agent is not easy uh, to be developed. It requires a lot of experience, a lot of years in the industry. It requires someone knows about conflict management, change management, risk management, project management, PMO, you name it. By the way, the PMO role is a totally different role than the project manager one. I've seen from my career that a lot of companies try to transform, if, if you allow me, a project manager to a PMO manager, don't do it. It will not help at all and it will increase the probability of failure. Then they discuss about people journey, assess stakeholders culture. It's not easy to assess the culture of a company because it's different for each organization. Promote awareness of the program and desired goals. In principle, when we discuss about transformation in the industry, we discuss about programs, right? It's not a project is a program interrelated projects or a portfolio many different programs so if you design and build the required capacity and capabilities happens with the help of the hr they discuss about the program journey launch project management office and define roadmap uh, if you allow me it's not launch the project management office you need to launch a program management office 
Launching a project management office in the transformation landscape will be of limited help. And then you set up the initiative, of course, you set up the sponsorship, you set up uh, the team, you set up the KPIs, OKRs, team, everything. Oversee the initiative design. PMO can play a vital role and oversee the initiative design, direct and support the initiative implementation. If we discuss about the high level PMO, or the portfolio level, or any PMO, of course, it leads the transformation. So out of this slide of Boston Consulting, there's a lot of key insights. I'm having a source, source there, so you can uh, dig some internet traits and insights out of it. Now, I will focus some key digital transformation pillars out of my experience. And first one, not by accident, is culture, values, beliefs, norms, and identity. As we discussed, culture is unique for every company. And this is the most vital building block of a digital transformation pillar, strategy, vision, mission, products, marketing, finances, initiative, tactics, partnerships, you name it. Third one is skills. Leadership, digital skills, of course. A mix of leadership and digital skills is the optimum you know, to bring the result. Capacity and capability you design with human resources will help you lot competencies. And the last one is structured governance. Who, when, how, what. Decision-making, for example, board, board, board decision-making is totally different than governance decision-making. Organizational design, information systems, OQRs and KPIs. All these you can read from my book that has been released almost a week before. It's a free book. I will show you the link later on and I will uh, share with you how you can download for free. It's my book on deal transformation and I call it Transforming While Performing. I discuss all of such kind of things and I will be happy uh, to share insights with you and contact me if you got any suggestions. Strategy, project portfolio and the PMO. So at the executive level that happens, we got engagement of the corporate strategy definition and the people, we have inputs to the initiatives portfolio. We try to align all those things. And this is why we need a portfolio level PMO. And the difficult part is to may, remain aligned and create a sustainable future delivering value. And maybe this is a checkmate strategy, but not that easy. Why? Because project portfolio management can be the bridge between organization and strategy, program, project management, and operation other than established PMO cell. So PMO is like the gatekeeper of the success of the product or the services, let's say in the digital domain. So organization strategy and objectives are translated into a set of initiatives which establish the exact uh, transformation portfolio. But it's not just like that, because it's the digital part that should not be put aside. And now, this is checkmate, the winning strategy linked to tangible results. PMIS have evolved a lot as well, something that I don't avoid to talk, and I want to say to you in the past, perhaps you know about Microsoft Project, Oracle Primavera, uh, Planeswire, and many, any other uh, software, but this is old school. And believe me, it's old school because now we discuss about BI, business intelligence, business analytics, Power BI, Tableau, Oracle, SAP, Lumira, and many others. But it's not only the business intelligence software that you should take into account, it's big data, big data as well. Perhaps you've heard about uh, data analytics, right? So Office 365 can help you. There's a lot of Office software application, uh, AlterX and Palantir and many, many other software that you can use. So it's not only a pro project portfolio management software, it's business intelligence, the new reality and big data. Some uh, AI applications, I will not touch a lot about AI, but I will discuss a bit uh, the notion of AI, which is quite important, is part of a digital transformation. You can see some key applications here, kind of not, I don't have the time to discuss about all of them. Facial recognition, you know about, uh, storage of an image, Right, uh, these things, for example, used for in the airport. Right, so when you enter Dubai, DXB, for example, uh, when you have your passport, they take a picture of your and they compare your picture taken a few seconds 
ago with your passport and then they let you in. Robotic process automation, virtual agent, uh, digital avatars. You did see my digital avatar a while ago. Machine learning, computer algorithms that provide systems the ability to automate, learn and improve. And this is key important. They learn and improve from experience as the time passes by. Voice assistance and decision management software. So overall, PMO has a foot as well in AI. And this is a key slide. Why AI is getting imperative in the PMO era? And more and more AI uh, applications will come into surface. Because AI, in principle, can eliminate inconsistencies. Once you identify the areas that AI could help you, then your PMO can skyrocket it. So why? Machines don't have bad days, don't make mistakes, or they make minimal mistakes because human will make the mistake because it's programmed by algorithms, by people. They don't sleep, they don't have to eat, they don't get bored, but they are to help you. So by applying AI to all aspects of the project journey from planning to benefit realization, you're able to take that information and apply it actionable insights. So a nice software, sophisticated, for example, uh, application robot can inform you of what can go wrong from the very beginning, can let you know if your resources are limited and many, many other things. The whole picture is important when, why, and how. So as the time passes by, we'll be seeing more and more AI in the PMO world. This is one of the key messages. Deal transformation are not purely digital ones, but part of a larger complex business transformation ecosystem. Why? Because it's on, not only the digital capabilities, but as well, the leadership capabilities that should be taken into account. Uh, this is one of the models I will not discuss in depth, but I will show you this discussed in my book as well. All right. Uh, I've enhanced the model with three more factors like reinvention, agility, innovation, and the X factor. One of the X factors is, for example, COVID crisis. Nobody expected this to happen. That changed the whole status quo. Reinvention. Whatever kind of PMO you are engaged or you build, you need to reinvent it. Some of the initiatives will be obsolete. Some of the initiatives will know will need to be designed again. You need to change the people. You need to change the KPIs. Maybe your PMO is not working that well. Maybe it reaches a level that you need to design it again and again. But what will make the difference is to, for example, every six months or a quarter year to evaluate your PMO to see how things go and re reinvent it. All the six are discussed in my book in a greater detail. Now, as we reach the end of the presentation, I will discuss the PMO as a digital chameleon. This is really important. The PMO can lead the integrated strategic digital portfolio plan and associated interpendices. And this is key important, how the PMO gets a foot on the interdependencies on all the verticals of the company, how you motivate your team to work in the PMO and bring the result. Develop and maintain the processes. Of course, we'll not just discuss only about uh, the traditional processes, a lot of digital processes to be taken into account, uh, business as usual, reporting, AI can help you on that. Active role in risk management, assessing interrelated or external risks from multiple charters, programs, or goals organizations, systemic risks, as we discussed, establish a clear visibility on the digital transformation journey. What you want to do, how you want to do it, why you are doing it, which are the results, how you're going to have the sustained value and has a centralized support vision for managing the changes because the transformation involves changes and change has to do with transformation. Monitor and control the transformation deliverables, removing obstacles as soon as possible and keep an eye on the potential conflicts of interest. One way or another conflicts will happen, but sometimes the PMO needs to act as a role model 
and move away, remove this object as soon as possible. Now, some uh, PMO leadership principles set clear priorities. Your digital journey should be clear to all, irrespective of the level, irrespective of the director level, irrespective if it's the janitor of the company. Don't discriminate the people because what I have seen and give you an example from my career is that many talented people are put aside. And I've discussed a lot with, I would say people that were not directors or that just simply team members, but when you give them a voice, they tell you something you never thought before. This is how the ideas come. So give voice to all in the transformation journey. You'll be amazed at the result. Communicate the, prior, the priorities in effective way. Transparency is a very key issue. Assess initiatives via robust assessment and methods and tools. What kind of tools are you going to be using? Sophisticated ones, AI ones, tools that people can understand, user friendly. How are you going to do it? You don't need to use all the tools that exist in the industry, but the ones that will make your life easier, but at the same time will bring the result. Allocate resources wisely. Transformations need a lot of people. Okay, you don't want to burn out the people from the very beginning. Allocate the work again wisely to people that can do the job. Train the people if they cannot do it. Build trust and focus on delivering value. Quite important. Perhaps you've heard in the Gulf about value management offices. I disagree with this notion. It's not a value management office because by default PMOs deliver value, and this is the main reason why they are initiated. Reevaluate, reinvent the project portfolio as needed every six months, every four months. Focus both on leadership capabilities. This is my book I was talking about. I'm gonna. It's free. You can log on to. I will give you the link uh, in a few minutes. Uh, you can download it for free. Uh, discusses about PMOs, about this information, about models, about pillars. I hope you enjoy it. Happy to be contacted. And happy reading of that. Uh, it's a donation from me to the community, to the people that uh, we cooperated uh, on the past. Happy to hear your views on that. Key takeaways, we've almost reached uh, the end of the session. So we'll have time to discuss a bit more on your questions or your issues that you anticipate in your companies, your business environment. Happy to give, uh, share uh, advice on the field. New transform world. What we used to know last year or yesterday or a minute ago is past. The recent crisis disrupted the global status quo in an appreciated way. However, it's not all black and white because many opportunities came into surface and the PMO role was amplified. There's a great necessity for most of the companies to build a sustainable PMO. And you can see that, for example, if many of you, there are people like you, many of you search for a role, you'll see that there are more roles in the PMO, more articles on the PMO that existed before. So overall, at least for the PMO domain and the PMO part, I would say that this change of the status quo was beneficial, and especially in the digital domain. Many new products and services, uh, services are coming out, out of this change and this out of this disruption. So well, there's a, a need for developers, a need for people that design APIs, so the market found a way to move away from the crisis using digital technology. AI, we discussed a bit about AI in the PMO world, a lot of AI applications. And these AI applications, the PMO world will be amplified even more and the role of the PMO will become more significant. AI and the PMO, these transformations are not purely, I discussed about that, because you need to take into account a lot of factors. I have seen many talented people that are very good in the digital domain, programmers, developers, they know a lot. They're top talents in AI, for example, 
cloud computing, big data, cybersecurity, cryptocurrencies, you name it. But this is one part of the success because you need to upskill in the leadership domain as well. The way you talk, the day you pass your messages, the way your people trust you, the way that you are transparent as a company to all employees, the way you solve conflicts, the way you bring the result. So it's a mix of the soft skills and the digital skills, leadership skills. So AI can give you a picture of what's going on now. It can predict what will happen in the coming, I would say, uh, period. They can provide solutions and minimize their consistency. Just one thing to know, there cannot be any artificial intelligence without human intelligence. It's the people who design the algorithm, the people that program the robots and the robots behave. Of course, in deep learning, we we'll discuss about neural networks. So this is totally a different issue. But again, it's all start with human intelligence. So don't be afraid to enter the AI world. There's a lot of debate that AI will take over our world. AI will make people lose their jobs. Same thing happened in the first industrial revolution, the second and third one from steam to electricity, from electricity to machines, and from machines to AI. So the market will find its own way. So it's not all black and white. Third, moving forward with a PMO. A PMO with enhanced digital capabilities can act as a role model. We're discussing about a more digital PMO, create value, and has strategic goals, build performance, sustaining capabilities, that empower an organization, but not actually its performance, right? What does it mean for a PMO to perform? Does it mean to bring the numbers, to bring more, I would say, prosperity in terms of finances, to make more money? Yes, but it's not only that. It's a place that people feel happy working with. It's a place that you can deploy your talents is a place that you get credits and awards and a good appraisal for your work. It's a place that you can learn, a place that you share knowledge. It's a place that you feel like home. So overall, it's a much more broader than most people believe. And overall, this will lead to greater results, greater leadership, great transformation. To navigate these historic times, because these are seriously historic times, these things have never happened before in the industry. Business leaders, PMO leaders, project managers, PMO managers need to address the immediate crisis while simultaneously get prepared for bold decisions. Sometimes hard decisions for the benefit of an organization. And these decisions are not easy, all right? Just to give you an example from the Gulf. You know that uh, almost a year ago, and I got a lot of friends in Emirates and Etihad, I mean, the airlines were forced to lay off a lot of talented people because there were no flights as it used to be. It was a bold decision, but they had to take. Now things are much better and they're trying to recap and they could pack the people. But it was tough also for the people that they've lost their jobs, right? Or they had to stay jobless for some time of period. It's not easy. At the same time, digital transformations are an ongoing external phenomenon with global impact. It does not affect only Dubai, only UAE or Abu Dhabi. It affects London, it affects Athens, it affects United States, it affects all of us. We are all in the same box. Uh, last but not least, this is uh, one of the biggest events in the artificial intelligence world that is coming in December, dual event live from uh, California, Silicon Valley and Athens, Greece. Many talented people, big names from the industry, from uh, PMI, from IPMA, for example, from the world that we know better, from uh, AIPM, from PMA Global Alliance and other people who participate. So we're going to discuss a lot of things 
in the innovations about AI, people from NASA. So you're gonna see uh, things never uh, shown before. I will be moderating uh, the PMO, PM uh, session from P from uh, PMI, AIPM, IPMA. So free for all for the first year, take the chance if you want to enhance your knowledge in the AI domain. At this point, thank you very, very much, uh, Sukram, for the opportunity given from PMI and Project Management Institute United Arab Emirates uh, chapter to present my views. I will be happy to connect with, uh, with all of you. Drop me an email uh, or send me a message through LinkedIn to discuss your business or, uh, or other I would say uh, information you want to exchange or business needs, and I'll be more happy to share knowledge and take it forward with you. All right, now uh, back to, to all of you. I'll be happy to answer uh, questions on the field. Yes. I see a lot of questions uh, on the chat. This is good. It seems that you were you got interested by a very, I would say, peculiar topic. Not many people discuss uh, in the Gulf about that. Uh, with the help of Kassan, I'll be yeah. happy to take the time and uh, answer most of your questions. Again, uh, Sukran for the uh, time given. Let me, sir, give me five seconds no. to serve the survey to all of you. This is the survey. Uh, let me share the survey link to the chat box. I don't know why I cannot type my message. All right. Just a couple of questions I have. Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. There are some questions uh, written down and uh, some of my questions as well. I will just talk about a little bit, right? So I have written down some questions here. Sure. Okay. Let me talk about a little bit of the PMO. Um, just uh, want to know about some technology um, in the advance in the next 10 to 20 years. What, how is it going to impact our lives? I mean, what type of technology we are, we are talking about? So in the digital transformation and how it's going to put our lives in this digital transformation. What do you think? Uh, thanks for the question. And principally, technology is a very broad subject. It's not that to speak, I'm speaking to specific technology. Just give me uh, an example. Uh, there are services and applications that came out of the crisis, for example, Zoom. I know just an example, right? That many people didn't know how to use Zoom or Miro or Slack, uh, this collaborating software or Asana or software that used in the technology sector to make our life easier or so COVID crisis enabled people to learn, or Teams, Microsoft Teams. In the technology sector in the PMO, there are a lot of software that we use, but what I did show you, there's an integration now to use a more sophisticated software in the business intelligence domain, the big data domain. The lot of data and large scale and complex PMOs that need a lot of information, a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, analysis that cannot be done by uh, by humans. So it requires maybe artificial intelligence or other technology. I did show you an advancement technology. I did show you a digital avatar. Digital avatars, something that will be uh, very popular. They're already popular, but they will become more popular. For example, now as I speak, I'm not a digital avatar, but I could make my own digital avatar with my own face, my own voice, with my own clothes, and do the job on behalf of me. So maybe some of your colleagues will be digital avatars, right? So don't think that this cannot happen. So technology is not something I would say specific, it's something broad, it depends on the sector. For example, in the airports, I gave an example. Uh, when you, there's a boarding or the check-in is done through specific AI software. There's a facial yeah. recognition, robots, you show your passport, takes a picture, Okay, fingerprints, all these things are through artificial. So these specific technologies that are related to specific services. So the services, the request for the services is attached to the technology. Okay, uh, 
uh, we talk about a little bit of COVID-19 crisis here. And uh, we were totally unaware of this pandemic coming up. I mean, you know, how it unfolds and everything. So what do you think in future, um, if we hit, I mean, if the whole whole world got crisis in this kind of pandemic, so how is going to cope up with the digital transformation? For example, for example, any sanctions happening, economic sanctions happen, or any cyber war happen, anything. I mean, you know, these kind of crises, a pandemic, I mean, in a global environment, if you think about, so how is going to impact the digital transformation? Are we going to renew it or new te- bring in new technology to save our, save our business values? Or- right, great question. Many thanks uh, for that question. In principle, in my advice to you, what has happened in relation to COVID has happened. Move forward and try to adapt to the situation. By default, it affected globally the world as we used to knew it. Things changed a lot in Dubai, in London, in the United States, in Silicon Valley, everywhere, right? In Lahore, everywhere. It doesn't matter where you reside, but it changed. I told you, I've given you many examples. Uh, remote working is one thing. New software, new technologies, AI, cryptocurrencies, uh, cybersecurity, IoT, many technologies came into surface. What I believe it, uh, I think it will happen is that the world will become more digitized, okay? More digital services, more digital products, okay? Because out out of this, in a sense, it makes our life easier, but there are a lot of dangers out of that. In in the forthcoming AI conference I did show you a while ago, we're gonna discuss a lot about the AI ethics. And this is a very, very red thin line, I would say, subject. So to answer to your question, the transformation out of the COVID crisis will not stop. It will evolve to something different. And actually we cannot predict what will happen. I know there are many models that try to predict the effects of transformation of uh, COVID crisis in relation, for example, to the oil prices. Now there's an energy crisis, okay? We need to adapt to that. COVID crisis affected, yes. Because all the transformations, they have a lot of moving parts and the verticals of an organization are affected. So overall, to recap to your question, deal transformation, business transformation in relation to COVID crisis, it will not stop. More services, more products will come into surface. Upskill in the future in Dubai, there are a lot of initiatives government-wise that discuss these things, try to learn, try to adapt. There's no other way to do it. Don't feel uh, offensive or defensive. Adapt. Many opportunities can, can come out of it. Okay. Okay. When we when we talk about digitization and digital transformation, right? Uh, we we think about a little bit of security as well, right? If we we talk about cyber security, for example, and if uh, in the banking, banking sector, investment sector, and uh, health sector. So what do you think uh, the level of cybersecurity we should think about in future when we are transfer, doing transformation and digitizing everything? When we discuss about uh, deal transformation in the banking domain, I got some uh, experience on that. I had some projects in the past in the digital domain. We discuss about security, of course. And security is number one in the banking sector. Why? If you don't have uh, security, one second of loss of services, for example, denial of services, it will cost maybe millions of dirhams or billions if it's extended. You know what happened with Facebook? A few days ago, they've lost out of six hours more than 7 billion USD. In the banking sector is more, I would say, difficult and more complex because the security takes uh, a lot of aspects like fraud, okay, transparency. It's not just the codes, how do you keep them? Uh, it's a lot of things to take into account. And this is the reason why in the, the PMO cooperates heavily, at least I cooperated heavily with the IT, the CEO and the IT people. Of course, the PMO domain, you don't know everything, right? You don't have to be a super expert in the IT or in the security domain, but you need to understand technology. Same in the AI. There are a lot of applications, digital banks, right? 
we didn't have digital banks on the banks so on the past. So you see a lot of digital banks come also in Dubai, right? So you don't have to go, there's a lot, you don't, you don't have to go to the premises. You just open a bank account from your house. That log on to the digital bank website, and this is it. All right, but out of it, out of the platform, there's a lot of things to take into account in terms of security. Where do you store the passwords? What kind of encryption you deploy? All right, what kind of people uh, you do? Okay, you employ. What is the level of expertise on that? Too many things to, the, to account. Also in the airport, I gave some a uh, lot of airport uh, examples because I've worked in uh, the airport domain a lot. Same thing, right? When they scan your picture and you have a digital check in where these pictures are stored, okay, your password from Facebook, right? How do you think? People call you in Japan, your mobile phone, and they ask you for support. They ask you to sell your services. They don't know your mobile number. So what happened? Companies did sell so, your yeah. mobile phone number. So what about such kind of security? But for the banking sector, security is one of the top most priorities. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so I got some question from Mr. Srinivas. Uh, from your research, what are the top two or three actions or activities or projects or initiatives that help drive the biggest impact for transformation programs for business? What are the three actions or activities that will help the impact on transformation programs? Well, as we discussed a while ago, transformation, uh, there's no one size fits all. It's not about the actions, it's, it's a landscape. We discussed about the transformation in the banking domain, there are lines. We're discussing about the government transformation. Are we going to have what kind of level of PMO we're going to have? Is it a program level? Is it a portfolio level? Is it a project level? What kind of tools? Are we going to have a digital PMO or not? But going back to the model, the key advice is to have a culture that allows openness, transparency, and trust. This is the first thing, all right? The second thing is the tool of the processes to choose the tools and the processes that most of the team and the people can understand. This is important because it's not only the culture, tools and the processes. And the third out of it, I would say out of my research is related to senior management buy-in. People that they have the capacity to uh, take the decisions people that have the capacity to appraise or reward the people, people that are on the board should take actions and be next to the people. So it's a lot of uh, complex things related to the environment, where you deploy the transformation, which are the goals, the vision, the anticipated results, KPIs, you name it, large scale or small scale transformation, how many initiatives? I'm discussing about a small one, 10, 15, 20 projects, I was discussing about the government transformation that has to do with 100 projects, 200 projects. Is it two years transformation, five years transformation? By the way, results from the transformation takes time. On average, for my research, almost on average, two years time. You cannot have transformation uh, results in six months, one week, one day. You have quick wins. I don't know if I replied to the, uh, the question of the attendee, but happy to elaborate more. Yeah, he elaborated a lot. Uh, this, uh, you, you mentioned the um, uh, framework and standard for evaluation. Uh, how do we measure the success of these transformation programs? I mean, how, how we can we have the transformation program? How can we can measure the success that is going on the right path, the right value? I mean, the, the right transformation is happening. In principle, most there in transformation world, there's a lot of failure, but people don't like to discuss about failure, right? As I told you, it's not everything success and everybody's happy and you go to work and there are no issues and you deploy the things and the CEO is happy and the board says, guys, you do a terrific work. No, not like that. What happens in reality is a path full of stones, okay? But what you need to do, the key methods of success is to be open to new suggestions. Don't follow only one path. For example, listen to your peers. 
doesn't matter if the level, if it's a janitor, if the CEO, if it's your director, if someone in less authority. The other thing you, you, you need to do is to focus on transparent communication. Don't hide the information from your people. If you are a star and you have capacity and you are expert in the field, no matter what they try to do and they fight you at your working environment, you will shine. They will put obstacles, but you have the capacity to overcome the obstacles. So be transparent, work in a team spirit approach. This is very important. No one can do it on his own, on her own. You need people to work together and bring the result. It's not easy. It's not easy and it was never easy and it will not be easy. There is no one secret for success because it doesn't fit to all the environments. Maybe in Dubai is working, in Abu Dhabi is not working. If you go to Saudi, in Riyadh, it's not working. Maybe Zedan is working, right? Maybe in India is working, maybe Pakistan is not working. Why? Because there are too many different people associated, different cultures, different mentality, different knowledge, different experiences. So if you put all those together, it's a mix of the unique transformation other in the business of the digital field. This does not mean that we don't try. The secret of success is to be yourself. Yeah, I like your word, transparent. You know, that is very... Uh very key to success of any organization. I mean, from the top level to the ground level, if the CEO is transparent to the lower level, the company will grow. Yeah? Correct. So I got one question. What are your views on customizing the program for each industry, company, environment, context, and stage of current maturity? Uh, can you repeat, please? What are your views on customizing the program for each industry? I mean, typical different type of industries we have, different type of environments we have, like health sector, IT sectors, and how are we going to customize the program and right. what type of maturity will show to us? Uh, in principle, customization works up to a level, okay? Because it's, uh, it's of us that works in the transformation domain, uses some tools, some processes, some, I would say, uh, governance uh, up to a level, right? But it requires a lot more of customization because results are not easy to happen as I explained before. Why? Because it's different people. Maybe you have more strict people. Maybe the culture is more easy going. Working from home requires high customization. What kind of tools are you gonna use? Is it Zoom? Is it, I don't know, Teams, any other? So you understand there's a lot of complexity. Working from home in a transformation environment is really really hard because you lose the feeling of the face-to-face -face interaction all right from your house you can have your camera switched off or right? maybe you are in a bad mood maybe you don't like what you listen maybe you don't like your peer maybe you don't like your boss these things you can hide it remote working but if you are on a table with the people you cannot hide customization of course works it is required but before the customization, you need to build the model. What kind of model, the modeling approach? What kind of KPIs? What kind of people? What's the capacity of the people? And then you customize it. Governance is in a matrix organization, right? What kind of PMO? Is the distributed PMO, is the centralized PMO? What happens if you have two, three PMOs in the same company? Maybe you got an IT PMO. Maybe you got a human resources PMO. I've seen these things in the industry conflict of interest between the PMO. And then you build a digital PMO that you put those PMOs under and they don't cooperate. They don't want to work because they lose power, because they don't trust you, because they think that uh, many other things can happen. So customization up to a level, no one size fits all. Patience is another key for success. Result will not come in a minute, conflict, requires customization as well. You don't talk to your boss the same level you talk to your wife or to your husband, right? So you need to be a bit diplomatic up to a level. So the, it means there is no standard or framework for, for, for customization. I mean, like, you know, you need, you need to understand the strategy. I mean, how it's gonna work at PMO level. There are maturity, level, maturity models in the industry yeah. that measure the capacity and the capability 
of a company in terms of readiness of what needs to be done, right? But there's no customization models. In my book, I explain one of the most established book on a step-by-step -step approach. I did show you a model from Boston Consulting as well with different models. Uh, so I wouldn't say there's a specific model to customize because customizations, customization means innovation. You cannot have it something like in a box and you take it because you need to think out of the box. It's not the same. We discuss about that. No one size fits all. You start with a legacy. You start with le lessons learned. You start with a vision. You start with a buy-in from the sea level. You start with a good team and you build together. This is the other side of transparency. Together for the transformation approach. Now this will get the sustainable up. To your question, I've not seen from my research or from my working experience, uh, customization model. Maturity model, yes. Uh, business process models, yes. Uh, project management models, yes. Program management level, yes. Portfolio level um, model, yes. But not a transformation model that can be customized. There are models that can be used. Flex model, you can search as a fully customized or not that I thought that works in an agile, non-agile world, and you can work on it. The thing is how you customize it. It cannot be done on its own, right? So each model has limitations. You cannot find a model that suits for everything. And this is where customization works. Yeah, that's good. Uh, okay, Dr. Harris, uh, I just want to ask you more uh, questions. One more just coming up. Some certification people are asking what will be good for AI and ML knowledge. I mean, getting some artificial intelligence, machine learning knowledge, what kind of certification we should be appropriate? Anything you are aware? Uh, certification is a very big issue in the Gulf because a lot of people choose to get certified under the standing, studying the actual domain. Certification is good. I wouldn't recommend any specific certification on AI. Why? Because a lot of universities that actually have programs to get certified through a university degree, six months, two months, maybe a month, that they give the basic knowledge on AI, they are from Udemy, they are from Coursera. There are a lot you can search. In my opinion, search with something small. There's also courses from MIT free on AI. There are a lot of courses paid and free. Choose something uh, small as a start, something like uh, one, two months or maybe less as a start and then go to uh, more certified. But I guess an academic certification on AI uh, will be more useful as a start. There are many to choose. I uh, just want a personal perspective. I just want to ask you, what is the potential of business analytics jobs in future? Business analytics, you know, uh, with the data, sample data, this, this tabular, Power BI, and data analytics in Excel, and these kind of new tools are coming up, you know, for big data and what do you think is the, in the future? Because everything is online right now and everybody needs data and everything. So what do you think in the next five years, 10 years, what will be the potential of uh, jobs for business analytics and data scientists? By default, big data and analytics is a science, okay? So science never stops. The potential is big. There are, I've seen a lot of reports on this growth of size data and the work required. So you understand because the whole world working from home became more digital, the need for data became enormous, okay? For example, you remember maybe 10, 15 years ago, there were hard disk, maybe 10, 20, 50 giga capacity. Now you got tera, three, four, five, 10 tera hard disk. This is a product, all right? But it's not only, it's a services. For example, in the past, maybe uh, one giga uh, web email space would be enough. Now it's not enough maybe mobile phones with capacity of 64 uh, gig will be memory enough. No, it's not enough. No, I'm just giving some example from the, from the product domain. What will happen is that the necessity for big data and analytics will become even higher. It will be necessary for the companies to recruit 
people that are experts, scientists in the AI and big data uh, domain, PMOs will get more digital, such kind of software that you mentioned, Tableau or Power BI from Microsoft or other software in that domain is a necessity because the project will become more and more complex because all of the things that happened. The next five years, I cannot predict the numbers because numbers do change exponentially, but I can tell you that it will become necessity to have some basic knowledge in this field and the data, of course, will expand enormously. Yeah, I mean, in the future is uh, the AI field and uh, machine learning field will be very, very hot and I mean, the jobs will be pouring. Okay, uh, Dr. Harris, it's very good to know you and yeah, when next session will be, I mean, we will be thinking of and any future webinar will be you'll be happy to announce or anything so we'll get in touch with you afwan once more many many thanks to all of you for the time taken to take part in this fantastic initiative from the once again many thanks to uh, pmi ua chapter for the invitation stay safe keep positive our future is more digital than ever Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm Dr. Harris. We'll sure be in touch with you. All right. Thank you, everybody, for your great time. And your PD will be awarded to you on your email. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot for a great session. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.